Next question is from Nathaniel L. Watson. You guys say stay in a certain rep range for three to four weeks. How long should you stick with an exercise before changing those up? We addressed this not that long ago. We talked about uh, exercises um, because I think someone asked right after we talked about rep ranges. So it's it's been, but maybe it's been a while. And it really depends on the exercise that we're talking about. Yeah, that's true. Um, and I'll tell you myself personally how how I do this is if it's like a high skill based thing like squat, any sort of squat variation, deadlift variation, um, I rarely ever rotate those completely out. Like yeah. I know you're going through something right now, Sal, which I've done this before, where I like I stop barbell squatting for a while and I do all unilateral. Like I might do that every once in a while, but it's not because I, I'm afraid that I'm so adapted to squats I'm not getting results anymore. It's more because like I'm addressing mobility, like Correct. I, what you're doing, or in some, some sort of an imbalance left or right. When when it comes to these really high skill movements, you may squat and deadlift the rest of your life and never be a master at it. Mm-hmm. Like it's really that. Like it it, go, it belongs in your routine all time. It's really a lot of the other movements that really need to be rotated in and out. Agreed. Mm-hmm. I would say uh, your squats and your squat variations, deadlifts and deadlift variations. So that re- that refers to sumo, conventional, trap bar, deadlift. Uh, your your bench presses and those variations. Rows, overhead presses, those should almost always be in your routine unless you're addressing uh, some kind of an imbalance or an issue. Mm. Everything else you could you could cycle in and out. Bicep exercises, tricep exercises, isolation exercises, those you can play with a little bit. Now, here's the thing, though. I still think you should stay with an exercise, even those isolation ones, unless you're advanced. Now, if you're advanced, you've been working out for years, then it's not a big deal. But if you're like most people and you're not super advanced with your training – I would say still stick with those isolation movements for a few weeks at least. Get good at them for three, four weeks before switching out. Minimum. Yeah. It, doesn't hurt. it won't hurt. If you're changing rep ranges and you're manipulating, like th- that stuff is way, way bigger. I think if you went from MAPS program to MAPS program, you would cycle through exercises appropriately because mm-hmm. each program is about 12 weeks long. Yeah. So probably 12 weeks would probably be the right answer for yeah. the ones well, cycling and, it up. And one thing that we do that I don't know if a lot of people even realize that we do in, in our programming is we look from even a higher perspective of. Have we incorporated enough moves in different planes of motion? Right. Yeah. Have we incorporated enough rotational moves? Is is it always, uh, you know, hammering this 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 same sagittal plane, which most people just get stuck in there? So, you know, that's something we are conscious of that and making sure that there's enough of that thrown in uh, to to make sure that your joints are still well and healthy and able to stabilize properly. This is why I think that performance and strong, because the, the the two of them are really addressed what you're what you're alluding to right now just if you don't own those in your collection of whatever maps programs you're following you're you're probably missing out on a, a big component or piece because when we did when we looked at all of them the you know anabolic and aesthetic and split and PED you know they address a lot of the bodybuilding type right. of you know sagittal plane type of movements which you know great for everybody trying to sculpt and build and shape and build your metabolism all those great things burn body fat but for overall health, joint health, uh, being functional, um, it, it's very important that you incorporate the unconventional type movements, anti-rotational stuff, multi-planar movements. Like those are really addressed well in in performance and in strong, in my opinion. Yeah, and you and you also you know here's one other thing about exercises. Before you can really start to reap the maximum benefit of an exercise, you got to kind of get to the point where you're good at it. Not super good at it, but good enough to where you could exert maximal force. Mm-hmm. So it's like you know, if I do a new exercise, let's say, let's say I've never done an upright row before for my shoulders, never done it before. It's going to take me at least, and, and let's say I'm already fit, so I already work out, right? It's going to take me at least a couple weeks just to get good mm-hmm. at upright rows, and then when I start to get good at them and really feel what I'm supposed to feel and really be able to exert force, uh, now I'm going to maximize. Now I'm going to get the benefits. Now I'm going to get the real benefits of the exercise. So it's like. It's like when I teach someone how to barbell squat, it takes a while before they can squat to the point where then we can start pushing weight right. and, and building muscle. For a while, it's just getting good at the exercise. So consider that as well. And now advanced people, people who have a lot of experience, they really know how to move well, they've been working out for a long time, they can kind of get away with switching exercises in and out because they can jump into an exercise and be good at it. You know, They can, they can do a shoulder press and be good at it. They can do a row and be good at it. They can, But a lot of people need at least a couple weeks you know, maybe a few weeks at least to get to the point where they can get comfortable with the exercise, comfortable enough 
to where they can push it and then reap the the real. I, I mean, I, I love if if you don't own our maps programs, and I love that structure though. I, I really sure. do that. You, you should stick to an exercise for twelve weeks, and in that twelve weeks, you should manipulate things like rep ranges, sets, and tempo and shit like yeah, that. Yeah, good, good Like advice. stick to the extra the stick the stick to the exercises for at least three months. Right. But manipulate the other variables that can can o progressively overload the body. So you don't need to change the exercises that often. And, and like to Sal's point, that becomes more even more important the, the more new you are. You'd have to be a very very advanced person for me to even think it's a good idea for you to be changing it. Yeah, by I'm the talking week. about like five years of, of consistent yeah. lifting. Yeah, like and, really and, and only then. And honestly, then I still don't think it's a superior way of lifting. No. I think it's like if someone said- You can I'm, get away with it. Right, though. exactly. If someone said like, hey, I just don't like doing the same exercises mm -hmm. for four weeks straight at them. Is, can I drop, you know, switch this for that? Or Okay, yeah, you're advanced. You can jump right into a front squat at, and fire it the way I want you to. You know that you can lunge Bulgarian. You can do everything already really well. Like, okay, go ahead and play with it for sanity reasons. But for good programming reasons, I think that a minimum you should stick to a mm -hmm. exercises at least a few months to get really, really good at it and then manipulate the other okay. variables. Yeah, when I throw in a new exercise now, I do at least that. So yeah. if I say, okay, like right now, um, I'm going to be doing trap bar deadlifts instead of uh, you know straight bar deadlifts. That means I'm going to be doing them now for the next right, two you've months. Been you've been doing lunges yeah. for quite some time. Yeah, and, and I'm already starting to go back to squats now. Right. Mm-hmm. 